What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, what events, and much, much more. Um, today I'm gonna react to a rare moment of CNN calls out Joe Biden's lies and embarrassing photo op at border as migrants crisis becomes a disaster. But before we do that, though, let's give you a word from one of our sponsors, Promo Palace. Are you a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard the beautiful lady. If you need online marketing or promotions, please go to promopalace.biz. You see the website scrolling below me. One-stop shop for all market promotions for your music, product, brand, or service. And I'm going to be adding new services as well soon. Um, let's get into it. Here we Colossal go. migrant caravan recently poured across the Rio Grande and into the streets of El Paso, Texas, and the people and the police didn't know what to do about it. It is truly a massive invasion. Any form of amnesty now would be a catastrophe. It rewards Joe Biden's lawlessness, and it rewards the criminal cartels, and it rewards everyone who has broken the laws of our nation because they've never done anything to our country like they're doing right now. Our country is being poisoned. Remember, our border is not open because of insufficient resources or legal authorities. Our border is open because Joe Biden has ordered it to be open and because Biden has broken the law and torn it into shreds. He has shredded our system and he's destroying our country. Biden inherited a flawless deportation system that was working like never before. In our history, we never did so well on the border as we were doing just a short time ago under the Trump administration. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I got to tell you guys, Biden is taking a whole lot of heat for this visit to the border. He might as well have just stuck to his original strategy and just not visit the border, right? Instead of this photo op that he took at the border, pretending like everything is all good. And I'm gonna tell you guys, um, this photo op was so bad that even the mainstream liberal media is heavily criticizing Joe Biden for this border visit and his plan on immigration and the fact that you know there's a lot of hypocrisy going on here uh when it comes to how biden is visiting the border but he's not going to see certain migrants who are in very 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 bad living conditions despite uh virtue signaling under trump when there were so-called kids in cages and how all the democrats ran to the border right uh to go visit but now none of them want to be seen at the border they treat the illegals just like they treat the blacks right they only care about them they only love them when they can be used for a political gain uh when they can be used for a political gain or it's negative it looks bad for them um they ignore them okay even the mainstream liberal media is calling biden out on this border visit it's really embarrassing uh almost just as embarrassing as biden when he pulled up to el paso and he spoke to a salvation uh army officer in which he talked about being with secret service in poland and ukraine or something like that it's a clown show, man. Fucking circus. 
Yeah, so another brain dead moment from Biden, or just a flat out lie. Uh, who knows? We won't find out because apparently the mainstream liberal media doesn't care when Democrats lie. But if a Republican lies, aka George Santos, they lose their mind and they call him a white supremacist, <laughs> right? When Joe Biden lies, oh well, you know, mm, he's just old, <laughs> right? But don't question his uh, mental health uh, capabilities, or you might be ageist, right? According to Sonny Holston. Uh, however, again, the, the mainstream media is just... giving Biden some heat here. Uh, hold for... up, hold up. Stop. Let me stop. Is that even thing ageist? <laughs> so now we're racist against old people. Get the fuck out of here, man. The border crisis, specifically when it comes to the fact that he is not as concerned about the migrants who are sleeping on the streets of El Paso, okay, who are living in bad conditions as they were concerned under Trump. In fact, listen to CNN call out Biden for not even going as far as to visit these illegals that they claim that they love so much when Trump was in office. Take a look. President Biden, my colleague MJ Lee asked the White House about the president not interacting or meeting with any migrants and a senior administration official told her that it was because there were no migrants at the respite center at the time that the president visited and that it was coincidental. But Poppy, I checked the migrant dashboard that the city of El Paso has uh -huh. and at the time when the president was here, there were nearly 1,000 migrants who were in federal detention. So if the president really wanted to see conditions uh -huh. i kind of doubt that the president of the yeah. united states would have been denied access yeah me too. Right, right and just it's remarkable what we're seeing behind you rosa those are migrants sleeping on the street of el paso right you're absolutely right and we've seen this for weeks and if the president would have stopped by here he would have seen right. that there are hundreds of people and you see them here behind me Hundreds of people living in the streets of America, I should highlight. This is a city in America. You know what? That, I'm glad she said it that way. In America. See, because this is the thing. Biden stopped building the wall that Trump was building. He basically said, hey, border is open. But he made it a texas arizona and new mexico and california problem when it's not you don't get to as an american project president say hey the border's wide open but only make it a problem for those states that border mexico you don't get to do that you don't get to that's 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 such, that's a hypocritical stance to to really take you know um this is an american problem like let me be clear on this. I, I love Hispanic people. I lived in Panama for two years. I have had friends from El Salvador, Guatemala. But we can't be sitting here shouting equality in America. And some people have to follow by the rules and others don't. We can't be sitting here talking about equality, you know, when everybody's not willing to tote the line. Some people are willing to tote the line and others aren't. The, the thing about equality is everybody has to follow the same exact rules across the board. Once you stop following rules, there is no equality. Same thing with equality of effort. You know, something that nobody ever talks about in equality to workplace. Meaning, like, you can't call in more than the next man or woman. You can't come late more than the next man or woman. You can't work lesser than the next man and or woman and expect equality. It's either equality across the board or none at all. And there is no equality in, oh, some people get to come to America and not have to follow rules, and others do, you know. And my brother-in-law, he's Philippines. His parents had to come over here the legal way, the right way. And that's why they own a business. And why would you not want to come over here the right way and the legal way? You know, why would you not? You, you can't – you ain't got no – you're not going to – benefit reap the benefits of real opportunity in america 
unless you can have the opportunity to own your own business. That's what opportunity in America is all about, being self-employed, owning your own business, building a brand, building a business, a customer base. You know, that's what opportunity, opportunity in America isn't just about coming over here to just to get a paycheck, man. And not be able because if you come over here legally, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna be getting no pay raises. You're not gonna be getting no, um, you know, you're not gonna be moving up in the workplace. You know, you're not gonna go from employee to manager. You're not gonna move up in position. You're not gonna move up in pay raises. You know, and it doesn't. You can't sit here and throw the equality argument when. There's people just coming in the country that you're just saying, hey, oh, they don't have to follow the rules. They don't have to follow our laws. But the rest of us do. We're all the rest of us are held accountable to the laws and the rules. That's not equality. So Democrats, you know, they're such hypocrites when it comes to this equality. And, they, and we're not all born equal. We're not all if we were all born equal, we'd be all the same height. The same weight, you know, we'd have the same um, physical capabilities, you know, like we'd all be able to jump super high. We'd all be super strong. No, some people like are sitting, you know, like LeBron James is six foot nine and uh, 260 pounds. If, if you're sitting there, put me next to LeBron James and say, hey, yes, these guys are equal at what at what at non-athletic ability jobs okay maybe but that doesn't that's not that's not equality if we can't if we all can't do the same things all the exact same things across the board we're not all created equal that's why some people are athletes and some people aren't that's why some people are nerds and some people aren't. You know, and another thing you have to put into this whole equality equation is ambition, determination. Let's keep it moving. In the United States. Yeah. And the top executive of this country came here. He did not came to see this. Of course. Rosa Flores, we're glad you're there and continue to be there to show it to us. Thank you for the reporting. Yeah, because Biden definitely don't want to be seen there, right? <laughs> he definitely does not want to be seen there because according to the media, right, according to the press, and they asked the White House about this, they confronted the White House about this, the living conditions are worse than anything they ever seen under Trump. You know how much Democrats complain about how bad the conditions were under Trump? Oh, <laughs> right? my gosh. Um, yeah, um, the media, the press is saying that they're worse under Joe Biden. Just uh, following up on the on the border, I I spent a long time covering immigration stuff during the Trump years. Um, I, I I never saw more um, damning quotes from immigration advocacy groups and human rights groups um, during the Trump years that, as I saw yesterday towards this administration. Um, just reading one to you, Eleanor Acer, who's one of the leading advocacy people and heads up a, a refugee group called um, what the president did yesterday a humanitarian disgrace. And that was echoed across the board in literally scores of emails I got from every humanitarian group. What do you all, what does the administration say to the overwhelming consensus from people who advocate on behalf of asylum seekers and refugees and migrants that what the president did yesterday was a humanitarian disgrace. Well, obviously, we take a different view. Uh, of course, you do. What you we would prayer. say is that the, this is a president who uh, understands uh, no, he doesn't. that uh, safe and legal uh, immigration into this country um, is a key cornerstone of our own um, security and prosperity. Okay, hold up. Let me put a brace. It's not safe and legal when you just allow people to just bum rush in over the border. You know. I understand there's people that they're coming from harder situations. I lived in Panama. Panama has real poverty. Panama has real ghettos. Um, these so-called projects in the ghettos in America are not real poverty compared to Panama. 
But at the same time, there's no if you if I try to go if I'm a refugee and I'm trying to go into another country, no, none of these other countries are just gonna allow me to legally come in there and not be held accountable to their laws. They're gonna make me go through a process. You know, like there has to be a process to this. Or it'll never be fair, it'll never be equality, it'll all just be a hypocritical horseshit hypocritical bullshit nothing but hypocritical double standards and okay and and let me ask you this why is it racist for america to build a wall but it wasn't racist when china built a wall to keep out the mongolians from invading and conquering through china i mean and they're right that we're literally allowing like we know the cartel has a stronghold over Mexico. They have a stronghold over the car. The cartel pretty much owns fucking Mexico. They own the fucking government. They own, they, they got the cartel employs more people in Mexico than any fucking business in Mexico. So, you know, we're just, I mean, we're going to keep allowing lawlessness people to legally come in here um that has i mean once people decided that we want to live in civilizations there has to be law and order if you don't want to live in civilizations hey then don't live in civilizations go live off the grid you know just roam and do you but once you start once you decide you want to live within civilizations you have to follow rules and regulations, laws and orders. Because if if not, it's like the Wild Wild West. And then if anybody thinks the Wild Wild West worked, you're dumbing in a fucking bag of bricks. Let's keep it moving. And that he is advancing ways to improve what a those joke. legal pathways what a to joke. entry. I mean, he increased or dramatically increased the number of refugees that we're willing to take in from nations in, in the hemisphere. Um, he uh, also Im- improved uh, the process by which uh, no, people seeking asylum can no, do that hasn't. in, again, a legal, safe way. Um, None of this uh, is and, not legal. Uh, we're also obviously uh, have to make sure that uh, that it's legal migration we're focused on and that the illegal migration is curbed as best as we can through complete horseshit, complete bullshit. I won't allow this guy to fuck it. You know, he. He might could get in front of these fucking reporters and spew this horse shit and this nonsense and these lies, but it's all bullshit. All they care about is illegal immigration. More uh, more stringent enforcement mechanism. So AKA the Supreme Court forcing the Biden administration to keep Title 42 in place, despite the fact that the Biden administration fought to uh, have it uh, taken away. And was going to let it expire without a fight. Again, the Supreme Court <laughs> seems to be the last institution in this country uh, that I can have any faith in whatsoever. Okay, and I I, I got just a little faith in the Supreme Court. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly this this is a crisis. But again, if you listen to uh, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mariakis, um, he's saying that. It's not a crisis. And CNN also called him out on that as well, too. Would you, Secretary, qualify what is happening on the border right now as a crisis? You know, uh, we um, we have seen the situation at the border uh, managed in an orderly way. Oh we have seen gosh. it in extraordinarily Lies. challenging circumstances as well. You can rest assured. OK, of course, it's challenging. Of course, it's challenging when you say, hey, everybody that wants to just come to America, just come to fuck America. You don't have to do it legally. You don't have to follow the rules, the regulations. You don't have to be accountable like the rest of us citizens. You don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to do none of that. Just come. We'll figure Bobby, it out somehow, that We're doing somewhere. everything that we possibly can to build a system that provides humanitarian relief in a safe an orderly yeah. way while trying Bullshit. to persuade Congress Bullshit. to fix what is a broken system. I understand that. Um, but just what you're seeing, what you've seen. No, hold up. Before she goes in, 
they broke the system by just saying, hey, everybody, come one, come all. You don't have to do it legally. Like my in-laws and my brother, my brother-in-law's parents, you know, that's the thing. People who come up through Mexico, oh, they can just do it illegally. People who come on the West Coast or the East Coast from, you know, countries overseas like Asia, oh, they they have to, most of them have to do it the legal route. And yes, there's some of them are being shipped in legally through you know, um, containers and what, like, what not, but most, the majority of them had to wait out a process like my brother-in-law's parents. And, and then they could come in, you know, and they do it the right way, the legal way. But, you know, people want to sit here and spew equality, but want to say, oh, you know, people who aren't originally born here could just come in here and not be accountable to our rules and regulations and our laws, do whatever the fuck they want. Bring in fentanyl, which is the number one uh, cause of death for ages of 25 to 35, not COVID. Um, it's fentanyl overdoses, you know. So, yeah, um, just the most hypocritical horseshit you can hear. The 20 times you've been there, the record number of migrants at the southern border and la last year it was nearly 2.4 million. If that's not a crisis, Secretary, what is? You know, you know, Poppy, uh, we have seen 2.4 million encounters uh, at our southern border and it is reflective of the greatest level of displacement of people in the world since World War II. It is reflective of a migration challenge that is gripping the entire hemisphere. When I was in Colombia, I spoke with well, so these people wasn't in no fucking war. They weren't in no war. You know I you know what I, I don't trust none of these motherfuckers no more. I don't trust none of these motherfuckers no more. They just spew lies and horseshit and bullshit. None of these motherfuckers can just give you a straight fucking answer. They always beat around the bush, man. The president the of the country, the foreign minister, the minister of security, and they spoke of 2.4 million Venezuelans in Colombia now. Mm -hmm. We are seeing Costa Rica's population increasingly uh, formed by Nicaraguans. We've, we're seeing a tremendous movement of people throughout the hemisphere. And a regional challenge requires a regional solution, I, which is why President Biden has led the regional leaders in addressing it. I understand that, Mr. Secretary, but this is in the hands of you now and the Biden administration. I would just finally say that border officials have been consistently telling Rosa Flores, our colleague, they feel abandoned um, by this administration, by the federal government. So why has it taken two years for President Biden to go to the southern border? Poppy, um, uh, we have been dedicating uh, our uh, efforts bullshit, to the lies. situation at the border since day one. Lie, 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 right? Thank Nothing you. but lies and cap, okay? That's all it is. Uh, what is Biden's plan? Well, let me tell you guys his plan. Uh, Biden announced a new set of policies to uh, allow 30,000 migrants per month from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela to enter the country and be able to work legally for up to two years. Basically, like I told you guys before, um, Biden uh, has been letting in Venezuelans, particularly a lot. OK, I mean, the border is basically open for Venezuelans. And that's why so many Venezuelans are trying to come in over the border, because basically they can get in on uh, claiming to be seeking asylum. And that is why we're having th this border crisis. OK, it, it is because quite literally we, we are letting them into the country. Right. So all of them are literally coming from Venezuela up into Colombia. A lot of them are staying in Colombia. OK. Uh, and they're waiting in Colombia to be able to come to the United States. Uh, but the ones that say, eh, I don't want to wait in, in Colombia. I'm just going to go up through, you know, um, Mexico. That, that is what they're doing. They're going to the border because they're. And let me let me pump the brakes on Greg real quick. The only reason he's letting Venezuelans over all these other countries is because it's a communist country. And we're supposedly at war with communists. Because, I mean, what do you expect when you bring democracy to their back door you know like 
it, it's it's such a hypocritical stance, you know, when when we thought Ru- when Russia was supposedly in cahoots or we thought they were in cahoots with Cuba or whatever, and they were bringing communism to our back door. Oh, uh, we was, you know, shitting bricks, shitting bricks. But, oh, well, when you bring democracy to the back door of communists, oh, it's okay. You know, it's not a double standard. It's not hypocrisy, which it is. And I ain't saying I support Putin or not, but I understand his motive. Like, and, and for United States or anybody to say that he doesn't have a proper motive, I mean, it's it's a hypocritical stance to take. You, you know, you can't get upset when communists are brought to your doorstep or your back door, your backyard, and then bring democracy to their backyard and act like it's okay, you know? This, you know, like, because NATO is democracy. That's what it is. You're trying to spread, you're trying to force and spread democracy. It, it, you know, that's the thing. It's like trying to force Christianity or force Islam on people, like. You know, you're like the Jehovah Witnesses of, you know, um, government trying to force everybody to be democracy. Everybody, that's the thing. Everybody's not going to want to be a democracy. You can't force everybody everybody to be be a democracy. Um, Some people are always, some countries are always going to be communist countries. And we just need to get the fuck over it. We can't fucking keep police in the world. Like, we're the fucking big, big bad sheriff of fucking Nottingham and shit. Such a hit. Yeah, let in because bullshit. they're Venezuelan. Um, that's what's happening. Uh, Biden's also sending an additional 100 uh, Border Patrol agents, and he's also continuing to uh, enforce uh, Title 42 because the Supreme Court made him. <laughs> right. That's the big plan. Right. That is the big plan from the Biden administration. But again, what I find to be absolutely. Uh, fascinating about this is, is just how, again, the Democrats, when they have their own border crisis, uh, none of them want to go to the border, right? They, they all are, you know, pretending like it doesn't exist. It took two years for Biden to go to the border when you had people like AOC and a whole lot of other Democrats rushing down to the border under Trump when there was a perceived uh, border crisis, which it, it really was just a migrant surge. Um, and there were kids in cages, right? They were all down there taking photo ops, right? AOC crying at the border. Where's AOC now? She's nowhere to be found whatsoever. If AOC actually gave a damn about these migrants, she would be down there at the border with the migrants, feeding them and clothing them and taking care of them, right? Like she pretended like she wanted to do under Trump, but she's not. Well, why is that? Because she never gave a damn about him, right? She never gave a damn, Okay. They're not politically useful. Yep. It's not politically useful for Democrats to go down there and to take pictures with them the same way they want to take pictures and to hug them and play with them <laughs> when Trump was in office. And this is what happens in politics, guys. The pendulum always swings the other way. All that rhetoric, all that virtue signaling that they did under the Trump administration has come back to bite them in the butt. It has come back to haunt them because now the mainstream liberal media has the expectation that the Democrats are so caring and loving that they're going to go down there and kiss the migrants on the cheek, right, and walk them into the country with open arms, okay? Um, However, that's not the case, right? It's not the case. I mean, we are walking them into the country, right? The border's basically open, but um, we're not taking care of them, okay? And I'm not saying that we necessarily should. I'm just saying that Democrats uh, have their own crisis. These migrants are living in bad conditions. It's terrible. Um, it is also negatively affecting the people in these border towns like El Paso and in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, but, you know, again, you don't see the Democrats down there taking photo ops and boohoo whining and crying on camera and doing interviews and hugging them and kissing them the same way they were under Trump. It's just funny how that works. And now, again, they have to live up to the expectation that Biden's in office and none of them want to do that, right, including the president himself. Again, this is absolutely amazing. Again, this is how uh, the Biden administration, this is how Democrats treat so-called minorities. They only love you when you are politically useful. However, when you're not politically useful anymore, they act like you don't exist. You know what? (laughs) And I think I heard enough. You know, and I never could understand. I still can't understand why so many people just choose Democrats 
when Democrats were the ones that were voting to keep slavery intact, Democrats started the KKK and Democrats started Jim Crow. I just can't get it. It's like they're wolf in sheep's clothing. And I ain't saying Republicans are all, you know, they're all innocent, but Republicans haven't sit. I, I haven't heard Republicans sit there and say all Democrats are racist. But apparently Democrats have accused all Republicans from being racist just because they voted for Trump. So that means you're saying my sister's racist and my brother-in-law's racist, and they're way more decent human beings than anybody I've ever met on this fucking planet. So uh, that's lies and horseshit and bullshit. That's why I can't side with them, Democrats, and in this gender, Democrats are pushing this more than two genders, nonsense and horseshit and bullshit, you know, um... Then y'all try Democrats are trying to attach civil rights movement to the gay rights move, gay rights and transgender rights and all that, which has nothing to do with that. And women's rights, which has nothing to do with that. And um, you know, what does being transgender gay have to do with civil rights? Not a damn thing. And um, gays and transgenders have the same rights as everybody else in the United States. It's horseshit and bullshit. You know, um, yeah. And another thing is with this, we already have, you know, I go into Dollar Tree one day and they're literally um, tearing down the register, the stands by the register. So I'm sitting there thinking, hey, you know, they're just remodeling. Then the next day I come in and they don't took down the registers. Then I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, what the hell? You know, they're probably just putting up new registers, remodeling. Just, you know. Then the next day I come in and it's all self-checkouts. Ain't no more ring it up for you. It's ring it up yourself. So there's a we already got a shit ton of robotics and internet software. And, you know, you got the, the fry cookers. The robotic fry crew, you already got robots taking jobs from legally born Americans. When you attach into this illegal immigration, man, it's gonna make it worse. You you're gonna the more illegal immigrants you take, you bring in, and they take these jobs along with these robots, I won't be surprised that that leads to a civil war. I won't be surprised if that leads to civil war. They're already taking away jobs. Chat, chat, GBT and AI, artificial intelligence, robotics. I mean, I just hope that you know, chat GBT doesn't turn into a better online market and music promoter than me. Cause then I might be out of a job. Hopefully, hopefully the podcast will be super monetized and popping by then. Hopefully, Dizzle brand will be uh popping by then you know hopefully you know new little apparel will be making a lot more money than it is by then you know what i'm saying because like we all could be jeopardized in jeopardy of uh losing our jobs to robotics and ai in the next five to ten years we all could be you throw in illegal immigration i mean you could you could have a civil war on your hands, you know. So yeah, and that's another because that's one of the main things that people complain about with illegal immigration is that they take jobs and, and they do take jobs, but a lot of these Americans do take these jobs for granted. I will say that a lot of these Americans take these jobs for granted. How do I know that? Because when I worked last job I ever worked for somebody. Everybody that worked at a job was working for a paycheck. Because most people work but don't know what they're working for. And if you're only just working for a paycheck, then you're working for nothing. You're working for nothing. Me, I was working to invest into something else. And I haven't worked for nobody for well over 10 years now. And I don't plan on going back, you know. So, yeah, man, this... Legal immigration has always been an issue because it's always took jobs, but now it's getting even worse. And then now you want to attach on uh, 
the sex trafficking with illegal immigration, trafficking kids, tra- sex trafficking, um, the fentanyl, which is coming in, the, that China is selling to the narcos, and narcos are selling it, cutting everything they can with fentanyl because they don't give a rat's ass, you know, or whatnot. And China definitely, like, two thumbs up, happy as hell over there about that shit, you know. Yeah, man. Um, and this idea that if we build a wall, wall, it's racist, but China could build a wall and it's not double standards, hypocrisies. Um, once again, I'll thank y'all for tuning in, Paul Pickett podcast, and I'm out. Oh.